Hi, welcome to the SWI YouTube channel. Today we're going to show you how to uh, frame in and build the cedar fence, how we do it. We've already done a video on setting Postmaster posts and all the wonderful, thing, wonderful things about those. There's a link below if you're interested in that. Sorry, Dan can't be with you. He's somewhere probably warmer. Once your posts are set, uh, you need to get measurements in between where your 2x4s are going to be sitting. So I'll grab a measurement, try to get it straight so your measurements as accurate as possible. These don't need to be cabinetry quality measurements, but they do need to be really close. We'll do 80 and a quarter on that one. And I've got Mark over here, he's actually using, in case you didn't know what right in the rain notebooks are, waterproof paper. You use a pencil, it doesn't matter if it's snowing or raining, you can write down your notes. 78 and a half. As long as you have set your posts level, plumb, your measurement from top and bottom should be the, exactly the same. I just measure the bottom and as long as you did it right, you should be fine. Something you do need to watch out for when you're grabbing these measurements, if you're on a slope, you need to kind of account for the corners of your two by fours. You know what I'm getting at? Because level will be here on the corners, so your measurement will actually have to be a little bit smaller. And if it's really extreme, you might actually have to go ahead and cut those angles into your two by fours to make them fit nicely. We don't have anything that extreme here, but we did have a couple we had to trim it just to keep it snug and keep it from pushing you out of square. 75 and three quarter. This measurement to that measurement was significantly bigger. I don't remember exactly, a couple inches than the rest of those. That's because we have electricity right here and we split the difference as best as far as we could without you know being too wide for our two by fours. Now that we've got our, our stringers cut, the top two by four will go at the very top, middle two by four will go in the middle, which we've already marked out, and the bottom two by four we go six inches off our grade mark. So it's six inches up from the bottom, this one's six inches down from the top. And we attach them with, I think they're inch and a half, stainless screws. For those who aren't aware of why we use stainless, there's uh, something in the cedar, which is what causes those black streaks when you don't use stainless screws. Black streaks in your fence. Postmasters do have hash marks every, every six inches. So the top one, top obviously. Middle one, we came down from the top, counting the top one. One, two, three, four, five, six is in the center of the two by four. One, two, three, four, five is on the bottom of the two by four. And the grade mark is down there in the liquid sunshine. We're tying into a corner, we'll be going into the end grain. We will come back and put some three inch screws into that end grain so it doesn't blow out. So now that we have, we have all our stringers on, you're good to start putting your pickets on. How we will do it, six inch block. You can use a tape measure, however you'd like to do that. But we write six on it so it doesn't get thrown away. You just set that on your top stringer. That's how you know where your picket goes. In this corner here, we have a fence meeting up. I can't just put a normal picket there because you'll see the, the postmaster in the back and that just doesn't look nice. So I already used this block Cut this picket to fit, notch around, and clean that up nice and fancy like. Everywhere you have a grade change in your fence line, you're gonna to wanna to start new, obviously, otherwise your pickets won't be following your stringers, rails. So we'll come down to this postmaster. This is where the grade change. From this postmaster to the corner is all nice and flat. And then from here, I dropped it just a little bit so I wasn't continuing to climb uphill faster than the actual grade was. So we'll come to our first grade change, which is right here. We'll just screw this picket to the two by fours. And this is what we'll actually attach our string line to. We're using screws because we will be removing it. And all the pickets in between will just go up and bump the string. Uh, we're using this method because it's kind of what I'm used to and it's more accessible to the average Joe. Um, there is a tool called the bump board. We have them, we've used them. Just 
we didn't bring it on this job. So the method I like to use, obviously you need to make sure your pickets stay level. Uh, I found out the hard way before I started this career. They don't stay level when I built my own fence in my old house. I'll actually set my level down two, three feet away, work my way to that level, check it, set it down, work my way to that level every four or five pickets, whatever it works out to be. If you get too far out, you'll have to start leaning pickets or trimming pickets or tearing them completely off and starting over again. So don't, don't forget to check level. Some of you may have noticed our nails, high, low, high, low, high, low. When you start your job, it doesn't matter which one's high, which one's low, but we just try to stick with it through the whole job so it doesn't look odd. We try to keep it in from the edge too far because you'll crack out and then it won't hold it, but we do try to keep it fairly close. This is a pretty good example because your, your picket will eventually try to warp just from weathering and drying out. And If you were to try to keep a straight line all the way through this fence line, that'd be next to impossible without snapping a, a chalk line which then you have chalk on your fence, you gotta figure out how to clean off before you stain it, so we avoid that. So doing this technique, it blends it. You can barely tell if you are a little bit out, but you can also kinda of see where your two by fours are, so top of a two by four, bottom of two by four, top of two by four, bottom of two by four. Helps you maintain that straight line. So we've reached the end of this grade, starting a new grade. When you reach this point, you take your string line down. That's why you use screws, because this last picket will come off, because it's very rare. It's one chance it's gonna match up just right. When you put your screws in, try to stick with your nail pattern. And I'll do my best to get the nail right back in that same hole so you don't just have a random hole. You can take your level, or your bump board if you're using a bump board. And that'll tell you where your picket's gonna go. And then you just take your string line from that picket. In this case, our last picket. So any of you that might be wondering why we didn't just start a string line at that end of the fence and run it all the way to this end of the fence. As I was sighting in the post, I was able to tell that it's, it's not a perfect straight line from there to there. It's, it rolls up, it gets a little steeper, it levels out. My grade mark I have on the bottom of the post, you can kind of see that one, was getting to the point where it was too high out of the ground. So I had to start bringing them back down to grade so you can only try to maintain that two inch we try to go with. So I stopped there and that's where I started to bring the, the, the grade, the slope back down a little bit. Very minor, I think right there, right there it was about a half inch difference. So I'm looking down the top of the post and if I take a tape measure from that post, where they all line up again was about a half an inch drop. And this one here I think was about an inch drop. It's kind of a complicated thing, it's something you have to really practice. All right, we've reached the end of this fence line. Uh, if you've ever seen a cedar fence where you got a bunch of five and a half inch pickets, and then all of a sudden you got a little two inch picket or three inch picket, what happens is they run their picket to the end, run their pickets to the end, and then they have this little bit left. And they're just like, oh, okay. So they rip it off and fill that gap in. Personally, I don't think that looks very nice. You gotta catch yourself before you get too close and grab a measurement from the end of your fence to your pickets. In this case, it's 42 and a quarter. That measurement divided by the width of your pickets should bring you, you know, give you a number of 42.25 divided by 5.5 equals 7.68. So that means seven and a partial. So what I would do is 42.25 divided by eight. It'll give me 5.28 inches. Take the remaining pickets, eight pickets, and rip those all down to five and a quarter, a little bit bigger than five and a quarter fill that space in. So all those pickets would only be a quarter inch smaller than your remaining pickets. In this case, it worked out pretty good. The sooner you catch it, the better chance you have of them being really close to five and a half and being very, being less noticeable.
Okay, now we've heard their pickets down. Uh, you cut more off, obviously it's gonna really mess up your, your dog ear. To fix that, you just recut your dog ear. And a little, little trick I came up with kinda helps with that. Go with your factory dog ear. Match your miter saw up to that angle. And in our case, with our pickets, and probably most of them, it's a 45 degree angle. And I just drew a line on the saw. And then you just bring in your picket that you wanna re-dog ear. Put it on there, in this case it's gonna be a very little, little cut, but. Brings it back to a factory dog ear. One of the problems with the Postmasters is you do have metal posts back there and nails don't go through metal worth a darn. This picket on this side will overlap this edge because I can't get a nail up here because it's metal. So we have a nail here and here, here and here. There's no concern about not being able to get a nail because this other picket will butt right into it and hold it secure. Hardly noticeable. If you didn't know you weren't looking for it, you wouldn't notice. And then you don't have that weird little sliver of a picket. In case you haven't watched the other videos where we explain this, which you should, that's the side you're going to want your pickets on. That way you have a better chance of being able to staple your nail, your pickets. So make sure you plan ahead. You know how you're going to face your fence. And make sure you have this side on your pretty side and the less pretty side on the back side. There is still enough room on the back side. You'll cover that with a picket. But it's, this is the right way. This will be the side the pickets go on. So when you come to an end with the Postmaster Post and into your fence, in this case, this is going to be a gate. Now these are a little taller than average because of the way this customer wants his fence built. He's gonna have uh, electrical fence wire up here, so we added some support for him. Normally they'd be flush. But this is how you'll finish the end of the Postmaster. Take a two by four, rip them in half, run a couple screws on the back side to hold that in place. That'll give you a place to nail your last picket, or in our case, it'll be hinged on one side and we'll have a latch on the other side, and be able to nail a picket on the back side to cover that up. So that would be the basics of how we build a cedar fence. The Postmaster post we've covered, so if you'd like to know more on that, how to set those, You'll have to refer to the link on the other video. That's the basics of how to put pickets up. I threw in a couple of uh, hintful facts in there to kind of help you out, just how I like to do things. Any questions, just post that down below and somebody will get back to you. Have a great day.